Cameron. I'm D Pat. I'm Hey y'all, I'm Shane Jimmy Cameron. Hi, I'm Jeremy Burgess. Hello, I'm Larry Crow. Hi, I'm Larry's mom. Hey, what's up guys? I'm Cody. I'm Bearcat. We're Big Hill Media. Hi, I'm Paul Wolf. This is Laney. I'm Christy. Welcome to the Hill. You're going to see this is on the back of the hill. Welcome to the hill. Welcome to the hill. Welcome to the hill. What is up, everybody? Happy Tuesday. Welcome to the Hill. My name is Nick. Uh, this is my little rock bouncer news show that uh, I've been doing for almost a year now, coming up on a year next month. So uh, I'm very excited um, and uh, look, looking forward to a whole nother year uh, as 2021 gets kicked off. We are 10, 9, nine days away from opening up the season the southern rock racing series uh and then the you know as a whole the entire national rock racing association season 2021 season so i'm very excited about that uh, march is going to be a busy month we're going to be on the hill at uh, the point one race up at um uh, williams hill which i'm excited about that because that's the first rock bouncer race i've ever heard of in illinois and, and uh the entire seems like the entire state is behind them and this race there's literally there's state senators there's like big time government officials that are going to be coming to this event uh i've never heard of that in any other state of any other rock bouncing uh race that i've been to so very very cool stuff very cool um Got to thank uh, our sponsors that are keeping this going here. Um, Raceline Wheels, for sure, just are the latest to come on board. Uh, huge shout out to Greg and, and those guys uh, taking care of me there. Cash LaCroix Racing uh, and Nick Reich Racing, two race teams that have got behind uh, this show. Very appreciative of that. Dano's Cages and Rock Life Off Road, uh, always taking care of me i appreciate you guys uh, my media partners eagle eye productions uh, got some big news that we're going to be dropping for him tomorrow so be watching for that um black dog photography d pass photography my 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 still skies man um I don't think that there's anybody that'll argue that there it doesn't get any better than those two. Uh, and then Charles from High, High Octane Films, always uh, getting us a video, man. Um, honestly, I, I have leaned on him so many times for content for this show, and, and I really appreciate that. It goes a long way, Charles. So thank you very much. 
Hey, listen, so I mentioned it earlier, we are about a week away from kicking off racing. And uh, but that doesn't mean that there hasn't been some racing that has already happened this year. Uh, case in point is King of the Hammers. And we've already heard from uh, Anthony Yaunt. We had Anthony Yaunt on the show. Uh, we had him on the show just prior to King of the Hammers. And then he left, went and did amazing things out there in uh, a single seat RS1. You know, the first one ever to cross the finish line. So, again, congratulations to Anthony Yaunt. But uh, he wasn't the only rock bouncer driver that was out there uh, uh, out there tearing up the desert uh the the only east coast guy that was out there and and i think that this is this is pretty cool that we have racers that race together on the hills in the southeast and then you know all the way out to johnson valley california about as west as it gets and they're out there tearing it up out there too uh i, I think it's very cool so we've had them on the show before man uh they are no 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 uh slouch they they are no stranger to the podium and uh, i'm always excited to have these guys on here so uh, on the right there you got mr paul wolf on the left is brother nathan what is up y'all welcome out heck yeah well hey that's that's what this show is all about uh, honestly uh eventually i would love to have a shop office shop studio type of thing and, and i'll be right out there in the shop with you i love it i love it um so you kind of heard my intro there uh you guys have already had a busy year king of the hammers is no joke i've spent four days out there just for the rc race and the the uh the shootout, which Paul, you competed in again this year. Um, but y'all went for the whole thing. Uh, you want to tell us, tell us about it. Um, basically right from the start. I'll, I'll let Nathan uh, start telling. He's the driver. I was co-pilot. So I'll let the, the driver. Heck yeah. Um, doing, uh, well, doing some shock testing on Sunday and, uh, I wanted the car up, um, bent the whole front end up, and then uh, spent all Sunday night cutting it apart, straightening it up as much as we could, welded it back together, uh, qualified Monday. Um, luckily, we're in the last hour of qualifying, so we had uh, some time giving, lined out the best we could. Um, qualified well, qualified second, uh, and then we uh, kept working on the car, found some other things that were a little messed up, and had to straighten them up. Um, Worked on suspension a lot over Tuesday and Wednesday, and then uh, took off a line Thursday. Um, car was felt pretty good. Um, hanging out, um, be, uh, get ourselves to the rocks, and then uh, let our car shine there and push toward the end. And uh, made a, a mistake in the dust and, uh, at what, mile marker 23. Yep. Mile marker 23. We made and just missed a, a parking and we went for a ride barrel rolled the car um, tore up a bunch of stuff so kind of our day there um, the only good part about ending so early is we were able to get back to camp for lunch so other than that uh, uh, we had a lot of fun out there um, learned a little bit uh, we're geared up and working toward uh, going back out there next year and trying to get all our things in order for that and you know, it's going to be a long process for that but in the meantime we're uh, Paul's gearing up for for Southern Rock and his racing and then I'm um, gearing up for uh, Champ Off Road and Oklahoma Short Course. Yep, that's awesome man you just made that seem like it was so effortless Nathan I'm sure that there was so much more to that week than than that uh than that story um didn't first of all you guys race tell us what you race let's talk about that Let's talk about uh, your, oh. your your car. Race a Can Am X3. We both uh, run uh, Can Am, so uh, we're diehard believers. Uh, you know, we've been believers since the uh, OG Mavericks. Um, you know, it's just what we do. Um, so we got a lot of good uh, companies to support us and help us um, along the way, uh, and it just. Uh, yeah, you, you do this as a, it's a hobby for us. We sometimes treat it like a job, and we put way more effort into it than we should some days. But it's uh, we're competitive. We're very competitive individuals, uh, and you know, either of us, if uh, 
if I can't win, I want to see Paul win, and I know he's the same, but if we're both out there, we're going to wreck the shit out of each other just to try winning, so it's just, you know, we're, we're, we're competitive, like, we're, we're, we're brothers, we beat on each other. Yeah, dude, that, that is absolutely awesome, I, I love that, um, uh, I have, my brother is almost five years younger than I am, and it's, you know, the, the same same deal we, we served in the same unit and in fact the same damn building in the army uh you know he he went special operations so i had to go special operations you know what i mean it, 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 and to to this day it, you know absolutely um and, and i love it though it's it's uh we jump out of airplanes together like it, it's it's cool stuff. So I, I get that. I, I, I love that. I, you all aren't the only brothers that are that that are in racing like like we do either. And, and uh, I, I think that's pretty epic sons. And, you know, the Bacon's prime example, you know, two brothers and and, and dad. Um, so I, I love that. I love that about this sport for sure. Um, so what what happens, man, when you wreck a car like that? Did you guys sleep at all? I mean, yeah, we Sunday like Sunday we worked on it till about what midnight, one o'clock. Yeah, and then we went and got some rest. But like we were we were all whooped. Uh, Paul and uh, the couple guys, the crew guys, they were actually just come in Sunday, and they were driving from uh, Las Vegas. And when I did it, and I called them and I said, "Hey, I said be prepared." I said, "This is what I did." I said, "This is what's all tore up," and. Uh, Paul cussed at me a little bit, but like it's <laughs> it's brother love. Like I mean, I, I wouldn't expect anything less, yeah. you know. Yeah. Not your, wreck your race car when you're out testing shocks or pre-running or any of that, you know. Yeah. Race cars would be great, so. Yep. Yep. Just uh, we we landed in Vegas and he called me and I told him he was lying. I thought he was messing with me. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. But uh. Out there, and we show up on the lake bed, and there's five winches hooked to the front of the car because we're trying to bend it back straight. It was that bent that the whole the whole front stub was bent over. Um, and that and that goes to you know running running good parts. A lot of the other parts held up great. I mean, it just was just a violent wreck. Yep. And you know, and he held it good, the job. So okay, that's what I was going to say. Them. More importantly, Nathan, you you are okay. I'm assuming. Yeah, and looking at the car, you knew what you're looking at. You knew what was bent, but like, there was no parts hanging off of it. There was, no, it was the car was intact. I like, yeah, I, I we flipped it back over on its wheels, and then I drove it back to camp. Okay. And started tearing it apart from there. But it was, it's one of the things like you you kick yourself in the in the butt because you you made a mistake trying to do something that you knew you should have been trying to do in the first place. Yeah. So uh, going into qualifying, you're pretty confident that the car's back together and, and ready to go. Uh, and tell us about qualifying. <laughs> the car was as good as it was going to get. Like it was one of the deals like that the front end, we went back and I think we adjusted the front end four or five times uh, trying to get it where it was manageable to drive. Um, it felt like it was kind of all over the place. Like you just, Stay on the gas and point and shoot and hope like heck that's the way you're going. Um, but like the parts, I, I had faith in all the parts that were on the car. It, the, the the front end was so distorted that the the toe and the caster and the camber were were off. So you get you wouldn't have a comfort of knowing exactly where the front end was. It was like you the steering wheel was to go straight one time and then it's at one o'clock to go straight the next time. Like it's just a lot of stuff that well, still wrong, but we, we had a limited amount of time. We had to get the car in some kind of shape to make sure that we made it to qualifying. Um, races you do not want to start in the back. Of the so, um, you, what did you end up qualifying? Qualified second. So, uh, honor. In like, and you know, we were the fastest ones in. Yeah, our, um, power. our power, power, I'm sorry, power, power. Um, and the track, the track seemed blowed apart, like, by, like, power. it was, it was destroyed, like, and anyway, it's, uh, second, second, second to last one to run, so 100 million I made to run, um, but yeah, it was, it worked out good, um, like I said, we, we did the car, held it well, and it 
hard to tell. Yeah, that that's what I was kind of alluding to when I said uh, that you made it seem so effortless and and easy. You know, s- s- qualifying second how, out of how many um, out of how many how many drivers? It's like 113, I believe. Yeah. for some reason. Yeah, that that is something to be extremely proud of, y'all. Extremely proud of. That is a big it's deal. Ne- it's never good enough if you're not staying on the I, top step. I, I get it. I get it. But just like brotherly yeah. love, just just like brotherly, you know, you know, I, I'm a dad. You know, a happy like a happy dad would be. That that is something. That is something to be proud of, y'all. You did that is amazing work. Now, now, but that's just qualifying. That's that's just you get a, a good spot when you take off. That's not the race. Okay. So be, yep. you know, be proud of that, but you got to roll right into race day, uh, which was Thursday or Friday. Friday. It was Thursday. Okay. Thursday. Okay. All right. And, and what was the course like at that point? Uh, the desert was beat. It was just beat to crap. Like, uh, from running the, the desert race, the T1 trucks, um, the king of the motos, all that stuff. Like the desert was just beat on pretty bad. Um, we weren't to explain it to him what, what you're talking about. You remember? It. So like, wow. it's like what happens out there in the desert. You get your big rollers, your two foot rollers, and when the uh, your trophy trucks, all your big trucks go through, they they're spinning, so they dig they dig them out, and they become square. They call them square edges. Where rather than being a rolling hill, it's a it's a wall. So it's like dropping off, and you're hitting a football every time. You know, and you're talking hundreds of these, you know, in in a quarter mile or whatever. Yeah. And so it's just on the car, on on every part of the everything, it's violent. Yeah. So and it gets worse. more vehicles run through it, the worse it gets because everybody's spinning, digging it out deeper and deeper. Yeah. And so that's what as we're being destroyed. Yeah. People that don't know. Very um, cool. Very cool. But, yeah. So go ahead. So like we spent um, Wednesday night. We were up till about midnight shock test, like just trying to, we were trying to find something that I, I wasn't happy with what we had. And we finally, I felt like we finally clicked on things. Um, it was, the shocks were, were pretty good. Um, and uh, so we decided we'd just roll with that and packed it up and went to, went and got some rest. <clears throat> so then Thursday, get up in the morning and you got to be up there the crack of dawn it feels like like it's 6 a.m i mean it's early but we don't race till eight so you're fiddling, fiddling around for two hours and you know at, at that point you're just get in the car and get moving and uh so we got in got rolling um took off um got out uh we were took off with uh jay shaw we were come out the short course he was in front of us we just kind of backed off and I let him go, and we were just trying to stay out of the dust a little bit. And then we got in over uh, mile marker two, um, and then uh, we we were a little faster than him in some sections, and we were able to actually get by him. And then we set the pace. We were running like uh, 82, 83 mile an hour, um, and that's where I thought we were comfortable being. So we're rolling along, and then Jay ends up passing us back right before we get into uh, some desert trails. So then we – following through some desert trails and stuff, and then we go through pit one, which is at mile marker 15, uh, get off into some uh, hills and some tighter desert stuff, uh, and we bumper to kind of not pushing him, but basically pushing him, um, and uh, we're looking for some spots, and we ended up just catching a, a, a wall, like we just didn't, didn't pick it up soon enough. Uh, and we were focusing on the train in front of us and not as much on the, the GPS as we should. And uh, we just got caught. Um, so we hit a sand wall. Uh, we were probably running between 60 and 70 um, before we got to it. And I, I saw it, um, got on the brake real hard, and then got off the brake to roll into it. And we still landed on the nose. Um, but uh, when the car was in the air, you know, it, we, we knew it was going to land on the nose, so naturally you got it flat-footed in the full drive to try, uh, when the front tires hit, to start try sucking the front end back out. And uh, we landed on the driver's front was the only tire that caught, and it shot the car out crooked. And we ended up just walking a little bit and barrel rolling. And uh, 
landed on our side, got out, assessed the to try to the car back over, and we realized the damage was more than something we could just uh, fix right there. So we decided that it was probably smarter not to uh, destroy a bunch of stuff and then just load it up and roll back to camp and get some lunch. Yeah. Wow. Wow. How, how big was that wall, you said? It was three foot. Yeah. Man. Wow. So, um, now, man, that's crazy. That's crazy. Um, Paul, you were also in uh, uh, your, was it your buggy from last year in the shootout? Uh, Christie's buggy. Okay. So, I took, I took it out there. Um, I, I took it out there and, and ran the shootout. Uh just, just to try my hand, you know, we're already out there. Why not go have some fun and, and really uh, kind of surprise myself, to be honest with it all. Uh, I didn't really think I'd do that well, um, being that it's just big rock, so really tire size kind of dominates. You, know? you can do so much with a UTV, but whenever you're talking a 40, right, to compete, I guess, be, and so... Going into it, I really didn't expect to, to do as good. Looking back now, I'm really happy with how it turned out, but I wish I pushed a little harder. Um, I was in sec two seconds, and I really think there was time I could have made up for sure. Uh, but my goal was to keep the car together and just just go. Um, I get hung up or get stuck. Um, roll over like last year. Yeah, not not roll over like last year, ten feet ahead. <laughs> So that was that was really I was really happy with it. Really kind of impressed myself with the time. Um, but and then to add more into Nate's and stuff like after we qualified, the car wasn't wasn't right. Like we knew when we sent it out for qualifying, we had bushings that were broke in the car. We had uh, the toe and the steering were off in the car. The shocks weren't even the race shocks that we were on. We were on another set of shocks um, that we just threw on the car. So. It wasn't like we got done qualifying and we could just go shock tune or test. Um, we had to actually strip the whole front of the car back apart, um, and we actually had to redo a bunch of bushings in the car and stuff were broke. So we, we spent a lot of time fixing the car when we should have been doing with shock tuning. So just to add a little more into there, you know, there's a lot, a lot going on there. Uh, and on top of it, we like, I, I only had the opportunity to ride, to ride in the or pre-run one lap of the race and, and a lot of the top teams you're talking they pre-run five six laps of the race you know okay. um just my plan was originally we were going to fly out there land go start pre-running and we'd have three or four days of pre-run well turn three or four days of fixing the car getting the car back up and running um and like leading up to the gps stuff uh some stuff on the gps like i just didn't pick it up fast enough and that was really a lot of hitting that was my fault because i didn't we were in the dust, you couldn't see where you're going, you're driving blind. And so you're relying on the GPS pretty heavily, and I didn't pick it up. Wow. Um, quick, it was a lot of fun. But on, onward from there, um, we got out and, and did really well, and was really, really pleased, really happy with how, how it went. Yep. Um, so uh, what's next, Nathan? Are you Is your car going to be the same one that you're going to run – at Mid America and that series? No, actually, uh, my short course car is tore apart right behind us right okay. now. Okay. Um, gotta go. It's got to go to paint uh, this week and get dropped off. Um, I got a couple things we got to change. Uh, I got to change some seat brackets and just some piddly stuff. And then uh, uh, it'll go out there and then it'll come back and then we'll start uh, assembling for uh, Mid America. And then uh, we got a couple things that. Um, couple tricks and things that we got to do but yep. you know it's not nothing nothing out of the ordinary yep. very cool uh did you get an invitation to visions at all me no okay i had a post it online already though yeah i i don't know that they've sent out all of them yet uh, i'm not sure about that i know christina's always watching so she'll probably answer for us but uh christina or, or jared but um I, I don't think that the short course stuff had been sent out or something like that I don't think the short course or the endurance, endurance. stuff has been sent yep. out. Good call. Um, we'll try. I'll have a car together for both. Yep. 
we'll figure something out. And then, uh, I'm sure that uh, I know Paul's going down there. We're going to probably make a, uh, I don't want to call it a family vacation, but it'll be like a family <laughs> vacation. Uh, I mean, of all the places that we go to race, that is the place to, to make it a, a family vacation, a, a family reunion, any chance to get family together. That's a, an amazing place to go and and ride or just watch racing or just relax and lounge. <laughs> yeah. they, they have a very, very nice facility down there. They do a heck of a job down there. And uh, it seems like they're not uh, scared to put the effort in to make the place better and uh, just keep keep building on it. And that, that's great yep. to see. Yep, absolutely. And they sponsor the show. So huge shout out to Jason and everybody in Mid-America. Um, let's see here. we got all kinds of comments in here. Um, uh, Jacob Salaba, always joining us here. He says, what's up? Charles Caris, High Octane Films, joining us. Pull up a chair, folks. Here comes the show. That's right. Miss Tiffany Porter joining us. Sean Keller. Shelby St. Clair. It's going to be packed. Also, spend money in Saline County for a chance to win a Yeti cooler. He's talking about that uh, race we're, we're talking about. Are you going to make it up to that, Paul? Uh, that's right. And you're, that's close to you, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, the Williams Pass. The uh, point one. Yep. Race. Yep. yep I'll, I'll be there. Yep. I, I'm fun there. I might, I might be in two classes racing. Oh, so. oh boy, oh boy. Uh, let's see, Anthony Mun- Muncy joining us. Uh, let's see, Sean Keller says, Paul, you smoked a shootout in a side by side. Um. Anthony Muncy, uh, Team MRT, watching with us. What's up, man? Todd Wilhite. Charles, let's see. Dylan Tobin, Shelby St. Clair. Paul can't afford to miss a meal. A <laughs> boy needs to need some meat on his bones. <laughs> uh, let's see. Michael Garske. Uh, he's the trophy husband. He needs to keep that boyish figure. <laughs> yeah. Curtis Hazard joining us. Merrill Hutchinson. What's up, y'all? Um, let's see. Michael says, I think Paul's falling asleep. No, he, he's probably hungry, though. I'm sure he wouldn't mind uh, wrapping up and getting getting some chow. Anthony Yant uh, says, what's up, Wolfpack? So uh, always good to have Anthony watching with us. Anthony had some great stories from King of the Hammers as well. You know, um, so. Hey, give us a hand on uh, fixing the car Sunday night. He was playing underneath it. Cool. Swinging a hammer. He tried well in one twice, but it looked like some gum, but <laughs> you know, who who would have thought that you would have a fellow East Coast guy laying on uh, you know, working on your, your rig out in the middle of the desert in East Nowhere he, California. He's he's always been one of them guys yep. and you know, he a fellow uh I, I guess we would say what, Saint Louis in, so to speak. He's in middle of Missouri, so he's yeah. You know, we're right around yeah, we we gotta deal with the same same politics around there. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so cool, man. I love it. Hey, real quick, why uh both of y'all really, why UTVs? Is it um have y'all raced anything anything else? Has it always been UTVs? <laughs> uh, they say with age get a cage. Um <laughs> we uh I I raced four wheelers for a while. Um we've always rode three wheelers. Uh we were playing with a young girl all the time. Um, so, I mean, the, the of of uh, what can you stand and go? Uh, let's see. Y'all cut out there just for a second. We didn't get that last little bit. You there? Yeah. yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, I was uh, into ATVs uh, for a while, um, and then, uh, like, when we were kids and stuff, we had three-wheelers, four-wheelers. Uh, we got into junk cars when we were really young, like, what, eight, ten years old? Yeah, race, race, junk cars. racing junk cars around the farm yeah. and the uh, yard. And then, uh, yeah, just we, we've always had a knack for, for doing things in the outdoors, uh, the off-road stuff, and, you know, with full drive Jeeps, uh, stuff like that. So we side by sides were pretty, pretty easy to get into, and uh, you know we just kind of had a knack for it and kept rolling with it. Uh, 
Paul, you had Christie's bike out there at uh, King of the Hammers, and there's a reason for that, right? Because you are in the process of uh, building something new, as you have, w- which we've come to expect uh, over the last few years. Anyway, you wanna you wanna tell us tell us about it? Yeah, it's a uh, it's a course of Can Am. Obviously, I'm not uh, another three. Um, it's gonna be a full body. Uh, it's it's going to resemble a can am. I know I talked to you guys and, and uh, we discussed that a little bit, you know, looking for sponsorship help, looking for more stuff like that. And and also it it hits more home to uh, for sponsors to uh, riders, your average show rider, to represent, you know. I know our single seats and stuff, uh, I tell people all the time it's based off the stock can am. Um, it's just uh, mainly vision is a big thing you gain in a single seat. Yep. Um, I copy all the geometry, the shock geometry. I don't change none of that stuff. Uh, it works extremely well in stock form, so I don't see no point in messing with it. Um, so I pretty much just did a full body. Um, the biggest thing I lost was some vision. Um, and I can't see both front tires now, things like that. But other than that, it's it's going to be a full body, a stock can am, uh, has a cage, door bars, and I'll be unveiling it here shortly. But yeah, it's. It's just going to be a fun car to drive. I think it's going to be a little bit different than what most people are used to seeing out at Southern Rock, but uh, it, it should race uh, the stock class and then it should race uh, the unlimited class. I'm going to race both of them with the same car. Wow. So, so, so it, you know, if if your Can-Am and, and this happens, which I know it will, Paul, uh, you know, you've, you know, uh, you've proven yourself. Um, what a, what an amazing poster child i mean call it what what amazing advertising that is you know you know that's what we're hoping for yeah so. i mean unbelievable that, that is just so cool so cool um and so what has been can am's kind of uh um because because that's what i did here I, I heard that the can am's were just on a different level out there at king of the hammers is, is that correct, would you say? I would I would say so. Um, they definitely were – they just built a good car. It's, it's just really hard hard to compete against the car they built, especially, you know, suspension. It's a really well-designed car. And the, the car is quick. It's nimble. Um, it's very um, – it's got a very, very stable footprint. Um, it's hard, like you, you just the comfortability's there. Like you, could, you feel like you could drive it, uh, and you can things with it that you normally can't do with side by sides. Yeah, yeah. Very interesting. Um, so, we, what do you guys think about this new UTV stock class? We we didn't really talk. We haven't really talked about that. Uh, last time I talked to you, Paul, we didn't know about that yet. So, so, I mean, to me. It, my view is it's yep. it's a whole different way to get a whole different type of driver out there. You know, what are your thoughts? I, I like it. Uh, um, I've always been a... a fan. Um, I, I think it's great. Uh, we are allowed to make you know a few modifications. They allow us to do it, um, but pretty much just both on you can do, you know, a arms stuff like that. So it, it's gonna definitely it's gonna show a lot. Um, it's gonna show the capability of, uh, of next yeah. dynamic. And uh, you know, Paul said uh, the both on components. I mean, it's gonna show that. You know, you can go buy this stuff off the shelf and car, and you can have a reliable car that does thing. Uh, it's going to show that uh, it, it's really going to come down to basically being a driver yeah. and whether or not you can get behind the steering wheel and make the car do what you want it to do. Yeah. Now, and and this type of racing that we've been doing more of is is more short course style racing. Uh, with some hill killing thrown in there, obviously, but, but, um, yeah, I, I haven't seen any, 
it, you think that um, the stock class should race the same hills as the open class, the same race, same race course? Absolutely. Uh, no doubt at all. Um, I, I think they should definitely race the same hills. Um, I don't think that's even a question. So I, I've considered, you know, I mean, it, I, I, I'm going to run far in, in two classes back to back. So, you know, I, I think not only I'm pretty confident in the car, and I think it's viable that it survive, you know, four runs every weekend, you know, wide open. So, so for you, Paul, it's going to be the open class and UTV stock class uh, not running the bounty series? Uh, I will run the bounty series. Um, I haven't decided which car. I may actually borrow Christie's car to run the bounty series. Um, I haven't fully decided that yet. Um, I got some other things that we're working on too. Um, so for right now, I think I'll run Christie's car in the bounty series most likely. Uh, but I'm not set on that by any means. I may end up in, in that car racing the bounty series also. Okay. Do you know if they're doing a championship for it? Uh, I don't, I really honestly don't know how the bounty series really worked. I, I just thought it was based on how many you, you won and th that was the money, the bounty money, I guess. I don't know. I have no idea. I don't, I don't handle the, I don't handle that stuff. <laughs> uh, let's see. Joshua Blake Dow says, what's up boys. Can't wait to see y'all at Windrock. Nathan, you did a fabulous job at Hammers. Uh, let's see. Todd will height. Always fun watching Wolf racing side by side insanity. Um, Anthony aunt says me and Colby did some Ray Charles welding on that poor can am held up good enough for a second place qualifying time though. <laughs> uh, that's funny. That is good. Um, Anthony says, whoever powder coats their chassis does a damn good job. That stuff was three times as thick uh, as the metal. <laughs> Gotta have something to hold the car. <laughs> right? I, uh, I can only imagine, again, out in the middle of the desert uh, trying to make repairs like that. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Thanks for a story. It makes for an adventure and a story. So. Yeah, perfect. And that's exactly you know what I want this show to, to be for is is those stories, man. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, Michael says, I've heard that's how Can-Am keeps their chassis together, extra thick powder. <laughs> uh, Whatever works. Hey, they, they, they do work. They do work. Um, uh, so we talked about point one kind of. Paul, what is... Um, as far as the other series goes, we have point one now. Pro Rock is going to be racing. Uh, Outlaw is going to be racing. You know, um, I know you are a season driver for the National Rock Racing Association. Um, financially, that's a big commitment. So I'm assuming that you'll be chasing the cup again this year. But do you have any plans for racing anywhere else? Yeah, I'll probably race uh, point one most likely um, is where I'll be probably doing that. Um, pro rock, I don't know about, uh, just, it's just too much for me to do. And point one kind of stays in the Midwest. And then I'll, I think I'm a bouncer class at point one. So I'll be racing there. That. So that's quite a bit of fun. Get to try that out. Something new. Yep. And then we'll there and see how it works. We kind of hinted at that, uh, earlier, well, later on last year after the season was over and, and stuff uh do you, what are you going to be racing a rental or what are you what are you working on i'm not at liberty to okay say that okay just... all right all right that's fine uh i appreciate you uh letting us know that you will be racing in a bouncer though and i'm sure that that makes a lot of people excited 
So I appreciate that. It might be a little different. Say it again. So just Say it again. That it might be a little different than what they're expecting. <laughs> well, hey. There we go. Hey. I, I think it's cool, man. I think it's cool. I, I love, you know, like Dex Browder. Dex started off racing RC cars, man. You know. He made a heck of a showing last year at finals. Yeah. And, and then he wins finals in a big bouncer. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Stood, That's wild. Stood on the podium in two different classes. You know? Unbelievable. Um, so. Cool. Yeah. Shelby, so. Shelby St. Clair says, uh, my lips are sealed. <laughs> that's good that's good well, yeah yeah you'll be hearing and then like just so everybody knows nathan will be racing uh short course at mid-america and then uh he'll be racing the champ off-road series and if nobody's ever got a chance to see that i know we don't really talk a lot about it here but you talk about going up to crandon and you know they're reaching speeds of what wow. 90 miles yeah you're talking Fly. Brandon is cool. Wow. Wow. Um, and I'm not trying to discount that at all, but I am excited to see what Mid America has. That new course. We're we're anxious to see it as well. Yeah. We're we're looking down there and see what goes on. I know Paul's uh he's been roughing me up about going down there and said he can beat up on me down there if he goes, so we'll see now. We might have we might have a knockdown drag out right there in the middle of that place. You never know. <laughs> well, I uh, just from pictures alone, I mean the place looks completely changed, and uh, so uh, I'm I'm excited. Yeah, I'm excited. It's going to be a good time. Um, well, listen, uh, it, did did we miss anything else? What's what's the? Uh, are you ready to go for Wind Rock? Uh, yeah, I got to finish. I was working on the car. Just just now, right before he called, I got buttoned some stuff up okay. and all that, and I really need to get some some test miles in on it. It has I have zero seat time in it right now, so you need to get the old bus ready. Yeah, I gotta get the bus ready. That's probably probably more <laughs> more on the injured list than the car is. Yeah, yeah, gotta keep Mom and Laney happy. That's for sure. Um, uh, awesome. So you will be well. We we already talked about it. Open class and and. Uh, and the UTV stock class. So excited to see that. Uh, weather is looking like, um, you know, we could have a muddy weekend there. You know, does does that change your prep in any way? More clothes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good call. <laughs> yeah. Good hey, call. Pray the car. 40. Try to get some of the buttons. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good call. I remember. Uh, well, uh, was it the last time we were at Wind Rock? Was when Pro Rock, or no, maybe it was Ultra Four, had their endurance race, and I think you raced. Was that twenty twenty or twenty nineteen? That was twenty nineteen. Yeah, okay. Twenty nineteen. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. And a race that was a fun. Yep. Yeah. See, I was. I didn't have to clean it afterwards, so it was that was the best. Cool. Cool. Yeah, <laughs> I remember that. Um. Yeah, that that that's what I'm thinking we're gonna have this year. Last year was just cold uh, and foggy. Yeah. You remember that fog? That fog was crazy. Um, wow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, the I think. Mud, good at though, so I'm I'm okay with the mud. Okay. Not necessarily far, but I always seem to do pretty decent when it's muddy. So yep. I'm okay with. It. Okay. Okay. Uh, very cool, man. Well, listen, in, unless there's anything else that you guys want to, any last minute stories or, or anything else, um, definitely guys want to give you guys an opportunity to say, give some thanks. Word, a word of advice, go to Hammers. Make sure you get a good rental vehicle when you fly out there because <laughs> you can do some neat stuff in a rental vehicle. I think we spent more time behind the, the rental F-150 <laughs> than we did my race car. I, I, I'm dead serious. Like, we, every night coming out, going out of there, like, uh, we take a different route out. It was never the road. <laughs> it was never the road. Yeah, I like, just get the insurance for the, for the uh, yeah. yeah, get the insurance. We, we <laughs> yeah. When you're down some of the sand flats and stuff in a rental vehicle and then you run into some rollers, it, it is quite the joy to listen to everybody scream. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I, I've seen some the twenty twenty when I went out there last year. It was I saw some some pretty nasty wrecks in brand new cars that that had <laughs> license plates from all over the place. So you know they were just rentals. Yeah. Oh yeah, that that stuff wild out there. Yeah. And we shout out to PRP seats because uh, we took a nasty lick in that car and uh, we both walked away and. Great. Well, I'm so, gonna yeah. I'm gonna put up your sponsors here, guys, because this is a big deal, and I know that you guys can't do this on your own. So, so um, you know, I got I got the list of sponsors up there, and and uh, greatly appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. My, and these are all we really believe in. If we don't believe in them, we don't rep them, and we pretty stick pretty true to that all the time. Yep, yep. You guys are out there doing the damn thing, and you're using these parts, so they're they are working and that's that's awesome that's awesome uh anthony on says koh 2022 rental race let's make it happen <laughs> yeah, I, like days of thunder you know what i'm saying that's what that's what it makes me that's what i think oh we're, we're all for <laughs> days of thunder that, that that is probably one of my favorite uh parts of that movie when they just destroy those two ford tauruses <laughs> uh let's see so um do, do you have your list of sponsors there or, um or do you want me to name them off for you you want to run through them or you want me to no man I, I can run through them real quick. okay uh, yeah let's do it we, we run mrt tires um randy and anthony they, they are amazing uh great guys to work with Raceline wheels greg mulkey he does an amazing job and then we got hcr suspension and we run Zollinger Knuckles this year. It's something new we tried. Um, towards the end of the year last year, I, I broke some parts and had some issues with some knuckles and brake calipers and stuff. And, and we got with Travis Zollinger, and he, he took care of us. We had some really amazing parts. And then HCR A-arms and then uh, Halo Diff and RCV Axles. Um, they've been phenomenal. I've had them for several several years now. Done quite well. Um and then we've also run G4 shocks. So Gary Hinkle, uh, he does a lot of the guys that race now. I think he pretty much does the top five, ten that race Southern Rock right now, from my understanding. Cool. Um, but that he didn't do last year, I think they stepped on board with him this year. So he, he has an awesome product too. And then Evolution Power Sports, they do an amazing job, uh, obviously bringing some big power. To the car, um, a lot of people tend to up on that and, and talk to me about it. Um, they do a really good job with that. Uh, give me a reliable car, big car, and then we got, of course, PRP seats, um, you know, race, race driven brake rotors, brakes. Um, you, know, you can have all the power in the world, but you can't get it stopped. It doesn't do you any <laughs> good. Um, CA, te CA Technologies uh, run their tie rods and ball joints. Um, and, uh, the radius rods. Yeah, too. and then ran radius rods, yeah. Yeah. Um they do phenomenal. Then. And then Can Can Am, yeah. I mean Can Am does they do a lot. They do. Um they uh they keep us in check and keep us in tune and then uh for the endurance stuff, uh we had uh competition L E D with Mark Shea. Um he was always uh good at right the way. He really puts out some nice products. Yeah. They're strong. They went through what? Yeah, they two yeah, for so went two, two wrecks and hammers, and they're still on the car. <laughs> wow. Not broke it off. Um, but, yeah, no, it's uh, got a lot of good help uh, for 2021, and, you know, we're looking forward to to making some things happen. Yeah. So, and then air grabber shifters. Uh, I know a, yeah. lot, a lot of people run those, and we're really happy with them. And uh, there'll be a few guys working on um I'm personally running some new steering stuff, uh, trying some new hydraulic steering out from Ross. Cool. So far, um, I normally like to get a couple runs on something before I recommend it, but I did KOH with it, and it worked really well. So if it continues working that good, I, I highly recommend that. And uh, we got to thank uh, Aggressive Graphics. They, they do a good job of uh, making our cars look good, even though we <laughs> seem to wreck them up pretty good. I, I got to say, just from the – little uh tidbits of information that you've leaked out paul the the new yellow i'm excited to see the new look for wolf racing that's uh that's pretty exciting 
it's it's gonna be bright <laughs> i could tell yeah. i could see from what i yeah the little picture that you that you uh leaked out yeah yeah that's cool uh, uh let's see michael's asking what did paul break during the shootout did you break anything during the shootout um on the on the second run i did okay uh I was there, and there was a wall to everybody was avoiding and we just did fun it wasn't for time i thought i could jump it and i hit it pretty well wide open and, uh broke a uh, pinion in half oh my goodness so okay, okay. back into two pieces and first time i ever did that that's that's a new one i've never never done that before so them, but uh those rocks are hard out there boy i tell you what <laughs> yeah we we're, we're, were running i was running it pretty hard i was asking the car for a little probably too much yeah yeah it, yeah well listen man uh this has been great uh, is anybody does anybody watch and have any questions for these guys before i let them get off to finishing up what they were doing before i interrupted them um uh, if you guys are interested in seeing Wolf Racing in, in person, uh, how, how can these guys follow you, support you, you know? Um, they can go to Wolf Racing on Facebook and then uh, all Wolf Racing, and then we both also have our own pages too. Okay. Um, they can follow. So uh, Wolf Racing is a big one on Facebook is what we our primary use there. And then we normally post uh, what races we're going to, so where you can come where we'll be at and all that and then race recaps yeah we always do race recaps and stuff yep. of every race cool um, you guys ever see us out out at a race um, even though we may be busy working on the car stop by and say hi um if i got time to talk i love talking to people and, and trying to help people you know especially people trying to get into racing i know it's an expensive hobby so i'll try to help you and guide you and and not make the mistakes i've made and cost you a bunch of money and, and make it harder yeah so got questions feel free to ask yep. you know and um, same exact way yep. so yep. no uh, doubt uh okay. M michael garske says uh ask dc thompson about broken pinions he has buckets full <laughs> yeah that's true yeah yeah uh wyatt thomas joining us says do you guys prefer more bump than droop in travel depends on it depends on the style of racing um you know and short course stuff um we're running uh about 13 inches of travel or 14 inches of travel is all we're running um you know with koh we were running 20. So we're running everything we can do we're, we're running you know full travel on a 72 uh, but we're trying to keep a 15 16 inch uh ride height like frame height um, so that way we can didn't drag the car everywhere. Uh, so it just kind of really depends on what kind of racing and stuff you're doing. Um, I know with Paul on his Southern Rock stuff, it's it's always changing based on grain and and that sort. He raises the car up, lower the car down, uh, just depending on what you're looking for. Cool. Yeah. So a lot depends on where we're going, what we're racing. Uh, what same, would you say trail riding 50/50 on it? Yeah, yeah, like a it depends on tire size and. That, like, uh, I know for trail riding with uh, the East Coast stuff, um, I'm running like 14 and a half uh, inches on a 72 car, uh, 32 inch tires. So like we, we keep the car up, uh, you know, just to keep it from beating the bottom of the car to heck. Yeah. Yeah. Two two totally different. Uh, you know, going from King of the Hammers to to the stuff that even even the short course stuff that we're doing with the National Rock Racing Association, man, is is not the same. It is not the same. <laughs> so, um, that's, that's cool. That's good insight. Very good insight. Well, listen, uh, this has been absolutely amazing, y'all. I, I really appreciate you taking the time. I understand that, that uh, even an hour out of the day is work that's not getting done or time that's not getting spent with family, and I, I do appreciate that um, very much so, both y'all. Um, I, I really am looking forward to following you guys all through 2021. Nathan, I promise I'm going to keep up with you more, man, and, and uh, learn more about your racing because uh, I, I feel like it's slowly becoming a part of – 
rock racing really i mean you know we got guys that are dipping into to all the all the different series and stuff and and parks that are doing rock bouncing and short course now it's super cool stuff man super cool zach garner joining us says who are these rednecks <laughs> we, we love you too zach <laughs> Don't you and Zach get started. I can't get to hear that. Good. <laughs> uh, um, but yeah, I'm serious. Thank you. Thank you guys. And, and I look forward to see you guys, you know, in like a week. <laughs> yep. Appreciate appreciate all the uh, the help and getting us uh, sponsors and that sort of stuff and getting everybody out and making everything know. Yep. Appreciate yeah. it. That help us. I greatly appreciate it. My pleasure, guys, and and uh, I'll be the one walking around with the camera all year long too. So, so be prepared. <laughs> Good. All right. Good man. All right, y'all. Thank you. Yep. I'll see you. See you guys soon. Wolf Racing. Zach, I know. Uh, I know they're your idols. I know they are. Zach, I appreciate you hanging out with us, man. Um, yeah, that, that was a good episode. Sorry about the audio. Um, I know that Paul, some some of those guys are out there. <laughs> so cell phone service, internet service is is not uh, not as great in some areas. So I try to be patient uh, with folks like that. Very thankful that they came on the show though, and uh, for what we what I did here. Um, you know, amazing stories. Qualified second. In a car that had, you know, been trashed just a few days before. Unbelievable. Zach, I, I don't know that I could choose a better driver, man. I don't know that I could choose a better driver. I don't know. Just just the fact, just like the Browders, you know, the Browders are the same way. They, they you know, the Hobacks are the same way. They push each other. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's... It's more about that brotherly competition than it is uh, actually winning the race. You know, I know for the Hobacks it is. They just want to beat each other. They don't care about winning money. They don't care about, you know, standing on the podium. They just don't want to, you know, don't let Colton beat me. Don't let Justin beat me. Uh, yeah, Bacons. Uh, we mentioned the Bacons earlier. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So we got quite a few brothers in racing, and, and I think it's awesome. I think it's great. I think it's it shows um, that that family atmosphere that we're always talking about is uh, is the same way. Yep, but uh, the Tanners. Um, yep, yep, absolutely. Uh, I'd love to see both Tanner brothers back on the hills this year. I'm I'm hoping that that happens. Um, I know that we're expecting to see Ethan, so I'd love to see uh, love to see the. The whole fan, the whole Tanner family back, too, definitely. Well, listen, um, I, I mentioned a show uh, when on Monday, uh, yesterday, uh, serving on the hill with with Taylor. Um, I am not positive, locked in for sure about a show tomorrow. So just be watching the page. Uh, I will, of course, share, share, share once I know or not. But uh, hoping, hoping to have a show for you tomorrow. Um, and uh, I think it'll be a good one. If it does go down, it, it's going to be a damn good show. So be watching out for that. Um, registration for the National Rock Racing Association event at Wind Rock, March 5th and 6th. Registration closes on Friday. I will be drawing driver's orders on Monday. Uh on the starting line show so if you are uh, planning on racing in any of the classes rc both rc classes all of the utv classes the bouncer class if you are planning on racing uh get signed up save yourself a little bit of money and get yourself uh pre-registered get your name called off uh, when we're dealing with the poker chips here zach i'm hoping you'll join me sir i'd love to i'd love to have you on again always love hanging out with zach um But yeah, that's it, everybody. Uh, let me know what you guys think. I, I am, I have my feelers out there for a couple of drivers, you know. But 
for the most part, everybody is elbow deep in race prep, getting ready for Windrock. So uh, I think that the cancellation of Texas was a godsend for some folks. And uh, I, I hope that it is going to mean that we are going to see, um, you know, we're, we're going to see even more new buggies than we probably would have at Texas. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see. Regardless, 2021 season kicks off on March 5th, and I am ecstatic. So get on out there, support your drivers, support your favorite drivers, man. Follow them on all social media. Uh, follow all of the race series, the NRRA, Outlaw, Point One, Pro Rock. Support all those guys, man, and, and uh, you know, show, show you love. You'd be surprised how much likes and shares and followings will do. It's free, y'all. It's free. And it uh, it helps these guys out a, a lot, a lot. Sponsorship-wise, you know, it helps them out a ton. So, uh, Todd Wilhite, great show. Keep up the good work. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I, I love this stuff, man. And, and like I've always said, I just want to see rock, rock bouncing, uh, you know, continue and and just grow and and uh, but 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 continue to keep that um, you know that family atmosphere. All right, y'all. I'm gonna get out of here. I love y'all. I will see everybody very soon. Maybe tomorrow. If not, we'll see everybody soon. <laughs>